In the previous two episodes, I told you how to set up an automated test in the JavaScript project. We did some test driven development, and also we tested the interaction with the MongoDB. If testing JavaScript is a new topic for you, I suggest you to go back and watch those episodes first. Today, I will tell you how to test modules in isolation by mocking and stabbing dependencies. We will continue what we started in the previous episode, building and sign up API endpoint. For now, the endpoint is very simple. It creates the user in the database and returns it. We already implemented two test cases. Let's see them. We tested if the user is created in the database and if the handler function returns it. Now let's hash user password. We will use bcrypt library. Its documentation is rather long, but when you scroll down, you see hash and compare methods. In the signup handler, we will use the first one, which takes two arguments, original password string and a number of hashing rounds. The more rounds, the safer the hash. So let's add bcrypt to the project. We will start with the simplest test implementation, which we will later improve. Now, the parameters received by the API should contain a user password. This password should be encrypted and stored in the database, so let's test that. We will fetch created user from the database, that's why we have to define test function as an async function. Now, let's check if the created user has an encrypted password. We use have property expectation. Now let's implement the actual feature. I will make this function a little bit more clear by using the structuring assignment. We define that the first argument has payload property and simplify the function call. Now create encrypted password const. We will need bcrypt, so let's require that. As we mentioned before, we will use the hash function. It takes the original password, and let's use 10 as a number of hashing rounds. Now we have to pass this to the function. We can use spread syntax. We pass payload along with encrypted password. Also, we have to add encrypted password field to the Mongo collection. Now, let's test it. We see that our new expectation passes. But there is an error with the returns user object test case. Take a look at that. In this test, we expect that function will return what was given in the payload. But now we are not returning password. So we have to change the expectation that it will compare all the fields except password. Rerun the test. And now everything works. But we check only if the property exists. It will be better if we can compare it with an actual value. With bcrypt, it is impossible because its entire existence is based on the fact that it returns different values every time you call it. But if we could somehow override the standard behavior of the bcrypt hash function, just for this case, we could write this expectation better. Overriding existing method with pre-programmed behavior in tests, it's called stabbing. And Synon.js is a library which will allow us to do this. Syntax is very easy. We pass an object and then the function name. In our case, it will be bcrypt and hash. First, let's install Synon. We add it as a dev dependency. We have to require Synon and bcrypt in our test.
Let's store expected value in a context by using this. We will change the bcrypt hash function that it always resolves to this value. We use synon stat method. Now we have to define what the function should return. Let's find this in our documentation. We can use resolves method. Now we can change the expectation that it compares with an actual value. And rerun the test. OK, Sinon tells us that we are stabbing the method more than once. And this is true. Before hook is called before every test in the block. So what we have to do is we have to reset everything what Sinon did after every test. We can do this by using Sinon restore function. Now rerun the test. Perfect. Most probably, in your application, you will use Sinon in different test files, so we can put its definition to the test setup file. Define Sinon as a global value. And we have to add global after each hook, where we will reset Sinon. Let's check test again. OK, they are still working. OK, so now let's use mocks. Mocks are stabs with a pre-programmed expectation. You can use them when you want to define expectations up front. OK, so let's write our code to use mocks instead of stabs. We run synon mock on an object and we received mocked object in return. Now let's write our expectation. We expect that the hash function will be called only once in every test. Let's copy the pre-programmed behavior. Now we have to verify if all mock expectations are met. We can do this in selected test cases or in after each hook. We will use the second option. Run the test again. And it still works. This is everything for now. Thank you for watching this episode. If you like it, subscribe to the channel and see you next week.